Initially large 10,000 square foot structures, edge data centers have undergone a significant transformation since their inception in 2012, evolving into smaller, more versatile facilities crucial in tier 2 and tier 3 markets. Joining me now to discuss this and more in Las Vegas at Infrastructure 2024 is Doug Recker, President and Founder of Duos Edge AI. And Doug, welcome to Vegas. Thank um, you for having me. Have you had any time to go and gamble at all? Or? No, 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 thank God. <laughs> thank God. Thank uh, God. I think before we go into talking about what Duos AI does, Duos Edge AI does, uh, and some of the market dynamics. Let's address actually the actual state of the market of Edge. How do you see the perception of Edge changing over the last few years? Because uh, you will remember, I mean, eight years ago, you would ask people what Edge is and you have 10 different answers. That's so right. Has it become something a bit more cemented? Have we standardized the definition? Yes, I would say so. So we, basically, I started my first Edge company about eight years ago. So, um, and you're right, it was all up and down. Nobody knew what Edge was. Now it's more concrete, now it's more focused. There's actual applications that can be run, it's proven. So now we're actually showing that it works. Hmm. Okay, what would you say are the major benefits of edge data centers in terms of sustainability? Well, let's use an example. So we just signed Region 16, which is a school district in Amarillo, Texas. And the, the main concept there is we drop our pod, our micro data center in that market, and all the schools that are in that region, 50 plus schools, they feed back to that pod. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't make sense to build a $30 million data center in Amarillo, Texas. Mm -hmm. What does make sense is to put a million dollar infrastructure there with multiple carriers in there where they can benefit from better connectivity, lower latency, and redundancy. Hmm. You, I mean, you've already mentioned better connectivity. This is also a, a way of uh, really delivering economic growth into different populations, which is something that do is uh, Edge AI is doing a lot uh, across the country. How, I mean, beyond what you just mentioned about schools, how does this really help deliver that economic growth and job creation? Oh, absolutely. So what we do when we bring that box in there and the, that pot into that market, what it does is it creates better connectivity. So industry, business, manufacturing will go to that market now because they can actually have better compute. They have lots of bandwidth redundancy, like I said, it's, it's almost like you're in a tier one market now when we bring our box to that community. Okay, uh, and then of course you've developed a quite a large scale portfolio, a large scale small portfolio, right. that makes sense to small right. the box, That's right. Uh, which is the EDC pod. So talk us through the, the pod, talk us through how does this work, uh, how big is it? Sure, it's, um, it's roughly about five, 55 foot long, 13 foot wide, it's got 15 cabinets inside, mm -hmm. and it's scalable up to 300 kW. So it's not huge workloads, but that's not what the communities are looking for right now. So um, it's fully redundant. We have two generators on the outside, mm -hmm. two UPSs, two PDUs, all the way in, so we're N plus one, all the way into the whole infrastructure. Mm -hmm. when, when you look at markets to deploy, so geographies, of course, US, big market, you're doing mm -hmm. a lot of work in the US. Any plans to go overseas or any plans to even to other markets within the country? Um, well, our primary focus right now is Texas, but we do see throughout the 50 states that this is definitely a need and there's, there's plenty of opportunity. So I think we're going to focus just on the U.S. for now. Mm -hmm. And then education and healthcare is really our, our sweet spot right now. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's a nice niche as well because not a lot of people talk about that. Uh, it's always about just the hyperscalers. And that's right. Right. <laughs> that's right. We forget about the important yeah. people, which are the kids that are learning to do the hyperscale the stuff. Yeah, that's the right. We'll build the next edge data that's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. I think picking up on that as well, you've got a partnership with the government around bringing connectivity in the rural, rural areas and less connected areas of the country as well. Do you want to talk about that? Sure. So basically what happens is, uh, like, we'll go back to Region 16. So um, what they do is they apply for grants through E-rate and rural broadband. There's all kinds of initiatives that they can apply for to get grants. Mm -hmm. And this actually helps them, I believe, because it shows that it's a physical structure that there's proof that, hey, this does bring in better connectivity, it does help the schools, it does help the community. So it, I think it's easier for them, and I could be wrong, but I, I think it's easier for them to get um, in front of the grant money hmm. with this product. Um, and then, of course, all this requires hardware. Um, there's a supply chain side to it. One of the big topics this year here at the conference uh, is that there are still some supply chain issues. Uh, we're getting materials. How are you navigating that? How, how far can you plan? So uh, actually we're kind of, we're lucky. We're in a sweet spot where, you know, the, the power requirement is, like I said, max 300 kW. So those aren't that hard to get. It's when you get into the mags, those type of equipment are longer lead time. So it's actually worked out pretty well with us. We partnered with a company called AccuTech and mm -hmm. what they do is they make sure that we have the inventory so we can build these quickly. Like right now we can build 
probably 10 pods a month, which is, is, is good for us. Okay. As a founder, what, what's, what's the dream? How big do you want to go? The dream is actually, our focus right now, and the dream is probably the next two to three years, is focus on two states, Texas, and, and we're still working on the other one. But um, to get all the schools connected that are in the rural areas and make an impact, that's really our goal. In, in three years. Hmm. Do you have uh, an idea of how many children you're really helping? <laughs> well, it, it, when we drop our first one, which is in two weeks, hopefully it's hundreds, it's thousands, so hmm. thousands of kids. Yeah, that'd be scalable. <laughs> yeah, 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 and yeah, so it's great. So it's over, like I said, it's over 50 schools, so it'll be hmm. interesting to see. And then we're going into other markets right after that. So we'll have four more pods that we'll drop before the end of the year throughout um, the panhandle. All right, soon you'll be helping millions of children. Yes, that's the goal, that's the goal, that's the, right. The next Bill Gates. That, 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 yeah, <laughs> there we go. We just want to help the kids, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, you've got 1% of it as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, not a bad thing. That's, right. that's right, that's right. Uh, and then, I mean, another question I could ask you would be, what's the one thing I did not ask you that you'd like to talk about? Um, uh, actually, you, we did hit on it, but I, we just want to go a little deeper on it. So this, when we do drop the pod, in, in, in the infrastructure for the schools, yes, it's great. For the healthcare, it's great, but it's also helping the local community as well. So it's bringing jobs in, right? Better connectivity for them, better connectivity through their WISP, through their partners, um, and redundancy in that market. Because right now, a lot of those markets, if AT&T or one circuit goes down, the whole market is down. So, and then obviously through COVID, it was very hard for them to work remotely. This will change all that. Hmm. Okay. How, I, of course, you're going to have a lot of partnerships to, to deploy these this pods. How, how does that work? Because of course, it's not just linking in the power. There has to be some sort of fiber linked into it. So talk us about the ecosystem that goes into it. That's right. So what we're seeing now is it, with the rural broadband and the E-rate, um, like our partner with Region 16, what they do is they apply for grants to get the schools better connectivity. So when those fiber providers come out and build to these markets, they'll build into our pod, and then the existing fiber market, fiber carrier that's there will be in there. So now you have redundancy. And the goal is to have three or four different carriers in there, mm. but, and then it brings in competition, right? So now the price of bandwidth will go down, the customers will have choices, and it gets competitive. Mm. And now this is actually, as you were talking, I was thinking about this, this is not to do with Doer's Edge. Um, would you see at some point, instead of fiber or anything else, we just use satellites to connect to edge data centers, like your pod, for example. Um, be something in the future. I, I think so, but I, I also think they need to land someplace, right? And they need to compute someplace on the land. That, that's why I think the pods, with their position, the way we're going to do it all throughout the country, they actually could feed off of each other. So I think it's a, it, it, it'll fit into that model, I believe. Hmm. Okay, uh, and then of course, Doug, so we are at Infrastructure 2024. When we come back here in 12 months time, so two sides to the question now. One side is, what do you expect the industry you have done or changed um, in terms of mindset or actually done something about it. Uh, and the second side of the question is, where would be Duo's Edge? So I think what, what I'm trying to push, and I think it would be a good idea, and if we see it next year happen, is you're seeing a lot of this two to 300 megawatt facilities coming up. I think it's better to do tranches of five to 10 megawatt all over the country where communities can benefit from that, like rural communities. You put 10 meg in their community, it's really not gonna hurt their infrastructure too much, mm -hmm. but it's gonna bring revenue in there and jobs. So I hope there's a shift in that. We'll see. Um, and the other thing is hopefully next year when we're here, we'll have 30 of them on the ground and really can show the impact of what it's made on the community by then. No, that's great. Because uh, like you said, like 10 to five to 10 megawatts is not something that we talk about too much. We, we just talk about the 100 megawatts. That's but there right. is a different segment to the market that really needs to be addressed, even with enterprises and startups. Um, that they need those smaller data centers. That's right, that's right. And, and also with this model, which is key, is you, we do have a lot of smaller data centers that have two to six meg that are, have a lot of connectivity in them, right? So we look at it as a hub and spoke model. So all of our mini data centers will need to plug into those. And I think that's what's gonna keep them in business. And it's gonna, it's gonna actually help with the ecosystem with them. So they're not competing against these big hyperscalers all the time. Yeah, and I guess you're agreeing you've really good and prosperous blueprint that can be taken to markets like Latin America, even Africa, um, because then the deliverables of those in those countries, in those places would be tremendous. Absolutely, yeah, I spent a lot of time in Africa and I think this this would be a great product, you know, so after we get this down and we really we really focus and, and get it squared away and all the bugs out, I think that's probably a market we'll head into in the next three years. All right, so I think we got the dream out of you. Yeah, 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 you did, there you right, go. Bring billions of yeah. children online. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes, yeah. yeah, that's the goal. <laughs>
And we'll do it. <laughs> Absolutely, we'll do it. I've got no doubt, especially in a market <laughs> like this, because access, access to capital is also not the hardest at the moment in our sector. <laughs> right. We've got a good business case. Exactly. Yeah. Yep, we've got to prove it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Doug Rackett, president and founder uh, of Duo's AJI. Thanks so much for talking to me. Yeah. Uh, as for your home, thank you for watching and do check our website and social media for the latest digital infrastructure, finance, and investment, investment news from around the world. At the Tech Capital, you lead, we report. Bye for now.